Good morning, Angela. How are you going? How are you doing? I'm doing well, Joyce. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. You know, I just want people out there who were affected by any of the storms last week. I know, thank God, they didn't, they only passed through here. So we didn't have any, from my knowledge here in my town, there was no devastation. But I just want families to know that we are praying with you and we love you and just pray that um, damages were minimal. Yes. So yes. today, I just want to welcome you to our show. I'm Joyce Burgess, and I'm here with my wonderful, wonderful friend, Angela Ballantyne. And we're here to talk about the National Black Home Educators and just all of the good things that the National Black Home Educators is doing for new homeschoolers, or even if you've been homeschooling a long time, if you are a young family with preschoolers or middle schoolers or high schoolers. Personally, I started homeschooling when my oldest son was 13. So I started homeschooling during the high school years, which I, I'm still very, uh, what's the word? I'm still very passionate about those high school years. And now that I have grandchildren, I'm beginning to get more passionate about the preschool years, you know, beginning strong and helping my, my children uh, homeschool their preschoolers. So it's really been a, uh, shall I say, a challenge to observe these preschoolers because they're here one minute, then they're here the next. You know, they're running and just all over the place and just thinking, how do you, and I did it. Angela, I actually homeschooled all my children. So at some point they were all preschoolers, but I right. think because I was in the mix, I think because I was actually doing it, I just didn't have time to figure out or to think about what was I doing? But by the grace of God, it was successful. And that's amazing. You know, they went super well, and now they're homeschooling their children, but I have a chance to step back and look at what they're doing. And it's so hard as a grandma to say, well, you're not really doing that right. <laughs> yeah, you know? right. But just write it all down. And so we're, NBHE rather, the National Black Home Educators, we're getting ready to launch a really cool program and it's called Begin Strong. You know, how to, how to homeschool preschoolers. So anyway, we wanna to talk today about scheduling. How many of you have challenges when it comes down to what time do I get the children up? What time do I put them to bed? When do I start teaching? How long do I teach? What do I teach? While we're not going to get into all that today, but we will give you some tips just about scheduling in general. And I think the first tip that I want to say, but before I say that, I want to say parents, homeschool your children according to your family culture mm -hmm. according to how it works because every family has a heartbeat it's like whenever you go into someone's home <laughs> it's crazy i'm going to say it but when you go into someone's home every family has a scent you know yes when you walk into someone when i was dating my husband and I, i'm not a proponent of dating per se so I don't want to talk about that. But when my husband, I would, when, when, when Eric and I were in high school and I would go to his house, there was a scent to their house. And when he came to my house, he said there was a scent to my house. So basically what I'm saying is every family has its own individuality. And so based upon that, there's a family culture. And so you know what works for your family and you know what doesn't work for your family. So tips on scheduling. The first thing I would say to families is don't let the schedule rule your day. Remember, the schedule is there for you to serve you, not you serve the schedule. The schedule must be flexible. It must be. And something my husband always said is there's an aspect of homeschooling that we have no control over. And that is when God steps in and just make everything good. I remember when my mother was ill 
I had to stop homeschooling. I'm, I'm serious, y'all. I had to stop homeschooling for probably about a year. We lived off of drill books. Thank God I put these drill books together. It was a drill binder where I had every subject. There were drill lessons like multiplication uh, sheets. There were addition sheets. There were language sheets like all about nouns or all about adjectives. There were historical sheets. And that's why I think I'm a profile kind of person for every core subject. I want to have a worksheet that goes along with it for every aspect of learning, whatever that may be. So we live, each child had a binder that was their binder with their name on it. And there were anywhere from 150 to maybe two, 300 drill lessons on every subject in that in that and we lived off of that during my mother's illness for about a year and i'm telling you where we left off before my mother's illness from studying the the normal our regular books language history it's like the children were right there where they needed to be they didn't lose anything because if I was caring for my mom or if my mom was at my house or my sister's house and we had to go here and go there, go to doctor's appointments, my children took those drill books. That's why I've, I've done this um, curriculum called Education on the Road because if you're driving somewhere and it takes you 20 minutes to get there, they can do at least 10 drill sheets within that time span or if you're sitting in a doctor's office. So let the schedule serve you and don't be too hard on yourself because things change. It's got to be flexible. And then the next tip for scheduling is, and I'm not going to be able to do all this today, but the next tip is do not schedule too many outside activities. In order to homeschool, you must be home. Simple as that. Have school Monday through Thursday. Don't do school on Fridays or don't do school on Mondays. I mean, really, when you think about it, in a regular school setting, it's been documented that students only get about four minutes of academic instruction on a daily basis. Can you imagine being in the classroom, 25 to 30 students, your child is getting probably less than four minutes of academic instruction. So homeschool Monday through Thursday, I, that's what I did from 730 in the morning. I know that's early, but Charlotte Mason says that the brain is working early in the morning, get the math, get those spelling words, get that out early. So we started homeschooling at 730 in the morning. By 1230, we were done with homeschooling. Now, there were times when maybe one child needed extra time on something. Maybe later on during the day, we would catch up on that. But our regimen scheduling uh, hours were from 7.30 till 12.30. I was tired. I wanted a break. I did not want to be homeschooling all day long. So we got up early. The children got up early. I believe in getting up early. But that's the Joyce Burgess family schedule. You do what is best for you, but I wanted to get it done. I wanted to get all of the lessons done because I, while I love homeschooling, I do have a life. <laughs> <laughs> and it. then next thing is to uh, another tip on scheduling. I'm just going to give three tips today. So the first tip I gave was don't let the schedule rule your day. Remember the schedule is there to serve you and every family has its own culture. The next tip is do not have too many outside engagements. You know, I know your children want to do drum lessons. They want to do music. They want to do dance. They want to do gymnastics. They want to do sports. That's a lot, especially when you have a lot of children. I have five children. Everybody wanted to do something. So I designated one thing per semester. So say, for instance, my semester was from January to May. One child got a chance to pick one thing. It was either dance, gymnast, uh, music, but you had one thing. And guess what? We had to make sure that those things fell on one day. So Thursdays was our day to get out. We went to, I would go to dance lessons, drop that kid off. You have to make sure that you 
uh, you know, are there with someone that you trust and it's a safe environment. But it was dance lessons, music lessons. And then, of course, you know, you have your younger students with you. Some of them may not. You may have a three or four year old. And that's when you bring books to keep them occupied. Um, give your older children more opportunities to be involved in activities outside of the home. Like I just said, younger children should focus more on their lessons rather than outside activities. So when your child is say eight and under, they need to really be focusing on their own um, studies instead of maybe doing something dance or something piano. So those are my tips. Um, know the traffic the times of traffic avoid rush hour i know that's kind of crazy but if you can avoid rush hour um, our schedule also included bringing people into the home that we trusted like a music teacher in the house or an art instructor into the house or tutors into the house instead of us having to go out all the time but know the traffic hours because you know, there's a rush hour. Save time by doing your errands on low traffic times or by going out, you know, with different extracurricular activities, by going out when the traffic is not. And I know that that's crazy, but you'd be surprised sitting in traffic. But once again, you have these drill books. Bring those with you too. Bring those drill lessons with you. So I hope that helps some of you. And I'll be coming back from time to time talking about scheduling. But Angela has something she would like to share with you and also uh, supporting tips on scheduling. Hi, Angela. Hello, Joyce. Those were excellent tips. I tell you what, that is just something to just <laughs> keep in mind to keep us all on point. I'm the kind of mom that when I talk about scheduling, I am um, really talking about um, how I can do it digitally and how I can use tools and resources to help me as a parent um, understand what I'm going to schedule for my child. And I kind of plan that out because as my days keep going down the line, it, it's, it helps me to have two or three days of um, coursework scheduled in advance for my child. And this is how I approach it um, using my digital tools of Google Workspace, Google for Education apps as well. There's a wonderful, wonderful app, Joyce, called Google Classroom, right? Google yeah. Classroom. Um, and you can uh, reach it by going to classroom.google.com. I think that's how you can do it. It's in the waffle as well. Um, is it classroom.google.com? Yes, it is. Classroom.google.com will take you to your free um, classroom tool to help you organize your lessons. And I just want to take a moment just to show you how I've done it. I organize my son's lessons by the month. So January, here are his lessons. And, you know, by year, each year you have a set of lessons um, curriculum. So January, there's February, March, April, May, June, etc. And then I have one classroom just for the state requirements that just lets me know what I need to focus on for that year and what I have to provide for him. So that helps me organize it. I'm just clicking through maybe the February classroom um, in Google Classroom to show you how it looks. The classwork page here is where I set for him every day what he needs to do. So he can take his device, log onto his account, and then he sees like on Tuesday, uh, on Thursday, uh, February 25th, he's got these things to do and he can click here. There was a Black History Month assignment that I had assigned to him. Um, Who's your favorite hero? And I have some reading for him from a, a Dr. Martin Luther King um, transcript that he had to read through. And then I ask him some questions about it. So you can put all of those resources in one place so that it helps your kid move along through with it. And then at the end of the day or whenever you have that one-on-one -on -one time with your child, um, it will help you have everything there that you can succinctly go through. So that's just a quick tip. This is not something we could do a deep dive in right now, but I do want to let parents know you do have these tools. They're available in your free Gmail account, your free Google account. And that's some of the things that we spend a little bit more time with the parents in our nurturing series and private training and things like that that we can offer you. So that's a quick and dirty. <laughs> so all they need is a Gmail account to be able to access 
that yes. information? Google okay, Classroom has been made available with your free personal Google account. So if you have a Gmail account, you will have access in your Google apps, you'll have access to Google Classroom. Okay, okay. That's, uh, yeah, that's it's awesome. It's a wonderful tool, something to keep mm -hmm. you organized and you know, your kid can use it as well. Um, so it, it, yeah, it's great. Okay, well, you know, uh, we, we talk about tips on scheduling and I do have a copy of my schedule. I would be happy to send you a copy as a bonus if you will email contact at nbhe.net. Again, that's contact at nbhe.net. It basically is a, um, what can I say? It's a copy of my schedule from eight o'clock to 8.15, subjects that you're doing at that time, from 8.15 to nine o'clock, from 9 a.m. to 9.30, and from, 9, from, from 9.30 to 10.05. It just gives you what to do within that space of time. And I will be happy to, to give you a copy of my, as a bonus, of my schedule for, um, for your homeschooling. So request that copy, and you, you, I'll be happy to send it to you. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us. This is, uh, we, we try to provide these little short moments because we know that you are homeschooling and you're busy, but we wanna provide these little short moments for you. If you have any questions, please put them in the link below or in the comments below, and we'll be happy. We have someone monitoring these sessions all the time. So we'll be happy to answer any questions and let us know how we're doing, if we're adding and creating value to your homeschool, or if there's any specific thing that you wanna ask, we'll be, if we don't know, we can find out the answer for you. Right, Angela? Absolutely. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you for listening today. And Angela, thank you for joining me. Have thank a wonderful you, day homeschooling. And remember, you are your child's greatest teacher. See you next time. <laughs>